Ladies and gentlemen, before we move to closing words from our hosts, let me just give you a few pretty amazing statistics about this year's Transforming Transportation. It was number 16, as you heard at uh, the opening uh, yesterday. And in fact, it was the largest ever TT. We had 1,100 participants, another 21,000 people tuned in online via the live stream, which is pretty impressive. On Twitter, we've been trending since yesterday morning. That's quite an achievement in Washington, particularly given what's going on here at the moment. Um, <laughs> and uh, we had 3,400 mentions by you and by all others watching online, half of them from people outside the United States. That's an especially great statistic, uh, something that I think we can be very satisfied about. In total, Twitter estimates that hashtag TTDC 19 made 53 million impressions over the last two days. Yeah. So I think that means congratulations are to be said to absolutely everybody who's been on a device getting the message out to all of the speakers, to all who were involved in the organization of this really truly fascinating and important Transforming Transportation 2019. Before I hand over, I'd also just like to say a brief thanks once again to our sponsors and our partners. Sponsor PTV Group, the partners include African Development Bank, the FIA Foundation, the Inter-American Development Bank, the Institute for Transportation and Development Policy, and the SLOCAT Partnership on Sustainable Low Carbon Transport. We also had session sponsors, and they include DFID, uh, ICAO, and the Air Transport Action Group. Also, the German organizations, uh, the GIZ, the Ministry of Economic Cooperation and Development, the Environmental Ministry, the Agroverkehrswende, and the Sustainable Mobility Initiative to me. So many, many thanks to all of those sponsors and partners for making these very, very important discussions possible. And now, to close this year's TT, it is my great pleasure to hand over, on behalf of our hosts, to Guangzhi Chen. He is the Senior Director in the Transport Global Practice of the World Bank, and also to Ani Dasgupta, who is the Global Director of the WRI Ross Center for Sustainable Cities. So, gentlemen, the floor is yours. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I think it's almost 5 o'clock on a Friday. And after two days, uh, a very extensive discussion, I'm very glad to see that the, full, the room is still full of uh, enthusiastic of uh, our new mobility discussions. And uh, I think my uh, host has already introduced me. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the uh, Senior Director for the Global Practice of Transport in the World Bank. Um, actually, I started this job about two months ago, but uh, I actually work in the transport sector uh, for, for quite some time. But for the last couple of years, I work in other things, and it's nice to be back. I knew, and I used to work together, so. <laughs> hi, everyone. It's, uh, hi, hi. First of all, it's great that you're still here. Yeah. Um, it's, um, it's been too, I think, I hope you like me, exhausted and energized. It's been a fantastic two days. Um, thanks for being here. It's, a, it's an absolute privilege for us um, to co-host this with the World Bank, so thank you for being here. I just wanted to start off by talking about why we chose this topic, um, and before we jump into the meeting of kind of what we have learned, when we were first discussing this as a team with the World Bank, France, right here, you know, the trade-driven disruptions uh, is in the news. All of you are part of it, listening to it, hearing about it. Our goal was to bring the discussion to bring two main things, which I hope we have achieved, is that this disruption is happening everywhere, shared uh, tech-driven discussion, or shared uh, mobility, electrification, and autonomy at some point. But that the point is that this disruption is not just relevant for Global North, but it's as relevant to all the work we do 
in the world across in the global south. That was our first goal. And I think you've heard for two days that that, was, that is a very relevant topic. The second goal was this disruption by its, itself, on its own, is not going to provide us with the outcomes we want. If you don't want to see the picture, doctor, thank you very much for showing us um, the picture of that, uh, of that particular lung in Delhi. We have to do something about it, and on its own. It was, so our second goal was to see that if the, what is it we as a community can do to help to get through the state disruption, the outcome we want. Just, just to add to that, I understand for the topic, right? I think is the point that mobility is not here also to replace old mobility, if there's such a term. I think there's been a lot of discussion yeah. about it. Right? I mean, it uh, doesn't matter how you frame it. Yes, technology is important, but at the same time, you have the last mile problem, but I think there was a, a participant also make the point there's also a first mile problem. There are a lot of countries who are still confronted with the basic needs. So I think we need to look at this comprehensively in a multimodal uh, approach. Uh, one thing I wanted to, in, I think there was across the, all the panels we heard, um, uh, I think everyone kind of agreed the opportunity that's there for tech driven disruption to make things better. And it was clear from a lot of things that we heard, things, we are not on track on transport. We need to make it better. So the opportunity is there, and, and these, uh, these uh, opportunities that is there for us to make better, and I, I'm, I can't get this lungs picture out of my head. I think that, <laughs> that was your purpose for doing that. Um, uh, but I think in the beginning, I think we heard there are actually real opportunities in, this, in the Global South that we can start with. I was very taken by um, uh, Mayor Prabhkito Mauricio um, talking in the beginning, saying, you know, we already have 73% people in our city in public transport. So what is it that we can do to make sure they actually don't buy cars and get out of public transport? So we have a different opportunity. We heard from the first lady uh, of um, Republic of Costa Rica that our, uh, our energy is already green. So if we use it for mobility, we will have green mobility from starting. So there are opportunities in other places that are, that's a, in a different, it's not true everywhere. It is true as we, in some places, how we can take this opportunity. But people also talked about how to, to get the best outcome out of this, the gaps there are. Mauricio Rodas himself said, you know, we're trying to get electric um, buses, but the, but, but the elevation we are in Quito, it's not easy for us to get there, right? Uh, uh, Adriana Lobo from Mexico talked about, you talk about uh, e-scooter being very cheap, but in, in case of Mexico, it is actually not cheaper than uh, getting public transport. Um, so we, we, there are very clearly very many opportunities there, but people, and I was going to say the same story, I love, I think that is the quote of, the, of our TT, that um, we are all talking about last mile connectivity, we need to figure out the first mile connectivity first, meaning we need to think about the core infrastructure is there or not before we can think about last connected. So the, the main message, I think, that from the first few panels be what we got, which I think is a very so, very real message, that yes, there's a huge opportunity for us to get things right with this tech disruption, but we have to connect the tech disruption, uh, produce mobility, the new mobility, so to speak, the public transport we have, and, and the infrastructure thinking that if we can connect them together, we will get the best outcome of, uh, of what we want. Thanks, Anil. Let's move on. I think we don't want to deal on that particular topic, but one thing I do want to highlight in this uh, conversation, that's really important reason why new, the new mobility debate is really critical in front of us, which I will call it the challenge of decarbonization of the transport sector. I think yesterday morning our CEO, uh, Christina, highlighted the, I think she framed it as transport, obviously generates a lot of goods, but it also there's a lot of things that are not so good. There are pollutions, there are crashes, there are congestions. And I think this is also should be framed in the latest uh, UN um, PCC report about globally whether we're meeting our target of 1.3 degrees Celsius or 2.2 uh, degrees Celsius. And at the moment, we are not really on track on that. And I think transport sector has a key um, role to play in helping the global agenda in that regard. Two numbers just to share with you. I'm, I think sitting here, I think you may not be surprised with that. One, of course, is the fact that transport accounts for about one-third of global energy uh, carbon emission by 2030, continue the current trend. And also, the latest number that I received is that something like 95% of the energy used for transport sector uh, in the world 
um, is non-renewable. And this is, sorry, it's not in the world, it's in G20 countries, because globally that figure is very difficult to come by. And this is on G20 countries. Now these are most developed countries, you can imagine. Then for those underdeveloped countries, of course, probably 95% or maybe 100%, they are non-renewable energies. And this is not the trajectory that we want to see. And also, I think there's sort of been a lot of discussion about uh, pollution. Right? In, uh, in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, estimated that pollution itself caused the death of half a million infants. And also, we know that this is not unique in just low-income countries, but also in the emerging economies. The challenge we're facing in Beijing last couple of years, or as we speak in, uh, in New Delhi, these are the new challenge we're facing in terms of uh, air pollution. And much of that, one could argue, is from the transport sector. Um, but there's, I think the good thing is that there has been, I think, an emerging sort of consensus that we need to confront with this particular challenge. I think yesterday, uh, Dan Spearing talked about uh, he recognizing transport as we know it is failing, but he also talked about the three sort of revolution, electricity, uh, electric uh, mobility, automation, and sharing is one of a, uh, uh, of a solution that, that may change the mobility world uh, in the world. And also Virginia uh, Carlo of uh, Publis also told us about traditional mobility has a huge untapped um, role to play, and we cannot wait for new mobility to solve the problem uh, for us. Again, I think there are good things, I think what, what we discussed, and there's been a lot of global alliance. I think one of those, uh, I think similar th uh, initiative in different parts of the world, I think there's a general recognition that I think we have to all work together in different area in achieving the sustainable mobility goal. And it has to be a, a goal for all, which is the four pillar of the sustainable mobility for all, inclusive, safe, efficient, and green. I think that's what we all strive to, to, to achieve. I think this, this was a, came across the whole um, two days, I think. Though we started with technology and uh, Dan Sperling's wonderful presentation, what came out very strongly is the institutions that's needed. As technology is a starting point, that's not enough. The institutions we need to have in place to make the best outcome possible. I thought there were a lot of good news that we heard that things are changing. I thought um, the session, uh, well, in, I think it was morning that Peter um, Calthrop talked about the integration of um, land use planning and, and, um, and mobility, how that's, I think that's a very critical piece for us. Um, um, Jared Walker, who, I don't know, Jared, if you're here, who likes wonderful blogs, um, and he actually, he talked about the best last mile connectivity is not to have last mile at all, that you are actually, <laughs> you are where you need to be, so you will be, Planned city. So this idea of uh, this connectivity that, that emerged from the discussion was a very good. I thought there was a very good, good discussion of data and how the the use of data, accessibility of data, publicness of data that came out over and over different session it was very good to hear Uber uh, talking about how they're now sharing. Um, that wasn't the case two years back. If we had this, that wouldn't have to that the, the sharing data, working with cities, uh, especially on the micromobility things. Um, uh, also, finally, what Guang's point, just that there was a lot of discussion how the new mobility connected with, I don't think we should use the word old mobility at all, with <laughs> mobility in general. Um, uh, like we heard, uh, uh, we have been talking about BRTs in the session. We heard this time ART, autonomous uh, uh, rapid transit how um, cities are deploying electric buses. So this connection and making mobility better that emerge and the institutions we need to be have in place was a, a strong theme that I think we can all kind of work from. So not much to add on that fund. I think, I think we all agree, I think sitting here, this, so the new technology, the digital platform, all this offers tremendous opportunity, but it's not, the technology itself is not a panacea to solve our problem. I think we have to work in, in all funds. Let me just share with you from the World Bank's perspective and the transport practice, what we've been doing and what we will continue to do. As you may know that uh, among the uh, MDBs, obviously we're the largest financier uh, in the transport sector. Our portfolio is over roughly about $40 billion worldwide. Over 100 countries were investing. Of course, these are mostly in low income and, uh, uh, and emerging economies. Um, there are two, sort of two main areas that obviously we're working one is really is to support our client country 
in creating the sort of wide policy ecosystem to support these new mobilities, embracing new technologies, and using new technologies to, to really meet the need um, of the sectors. Second, I think is really we reach out to, um, uh, I think we really diversify ourselves over the last 10 years. 15 years ago when I was in the transport sector in South Asia, for example, at that time our portfolio, if I recall correctly, was roughly 95% in highway and roads. Now in the South Asia transport portfolio, it's like that, that percentage is down to about 50%. We're doing other things, we're doing rail, we're doing inner waterways, we're doing logistics. So this is the, this is the transformation uh, that we've been embracing. And of course, we have done a lot in the urban mobility, particularly on the BRT system, by bringing new technology, using big data uh, to design the BRT lines and also to manage that process moving forward. And of course, then we continue to, um, to work on sort of cost-cutting uh, issues. So for example, the topic we just discussed about how human development is linked to transport sector, the topic earlier talking about uh, the gender dimension of transport and all this uh, area as well. Um, one, one two, maybe two other examples that I could mention is in terms of uh, opportunity new mobility to accelerate this uh, current shift. One is in, uh, in the Philippines, we work with the government to develop this uh, so-called driver's platform uh, to enable geospatial analysis uh, of crashes to help reduce them. This is how we really embracing technology. And then I think you seen the uh, video yesterday about the 20, 2019 uh, Lake Victoria challenge, how we can use uh, drone technology to help sort of uh, low income area where you have no existing infrastructure to deliver a certain sort of a, a high value of medical products uh, using new technologies. This is really the future the World Bank is really dedicating itself for a sector to support our clients in that regard. Um, it's, and also I think it's the other aspect is on the knowledge side. In, uh, in the COP24 in the last uh, two months ago uh, in, um, in, uh, in Poland, we launched this uh, e-mobility uh, uh, report. And I think today or this session, we also uh, uh, launched the rail freight challenge in the emerging economy. And we also have done works on urban rail development as well. So let me stop here and I'll pass my to my colleague I need to talk about their work as well. Thank you. We don't have $40 billion, so <laughs> uh, it's uh, actually we co collaborate a lot with the bank team. It's a fantastic uh, partnership, and, and bank is doing a lot of things in the area. As, as we wrap up, I just want to share a few things in this space um, we are doing and want to do more of, hopefully with a lot of you. Um, uh, one is, you know, for, for, a, for a while, for about four or five years, we've been working in the, in this, in this space of tech-driven disruption, basically mostly working with entrepreneurs and to see how to incubate, how to support. We started in India with a, quite a successful um, competition called Rickshaw Rising, trying to see auto rickshaws, how that, they can provide better services. That whole work um, led us to actually start working a lot with entrepreneurs. Recently, we launched uh, and worked with the uh, city of Bangalore to get a in a competition of last mile connectivity with the, with the electric scooter company, uh, real two-wheeler scooter, not, not the scooter like la Bird, uh, actually won. This is something we're doing similarly in, um, in, um, in, in Brazil and in Mexico. But doing this work, what we realize that it is not just one country or one uh, place but we need to do this. This opportunity of this tech this disruption is actually is an opportunity to actually work and change the whole ecosystem. And we realize it's not something we just want to or can just do on our own. So a few days back, um, maybe some of you there, we launched a new initiative to get actually build an alliance to help cities to incorporate tech driven disruption called this new alliance called NUMO, um, uh, New Mobility, Urban Mobility. Um, it's to bring together parties, cities, uh, OEM uh, service providers like Lime Bike, Ubers, car manufacturers, but also technical people like us together to build, help build the solutions we want to integrate this new mobility for a better mobility overall. So these are the kind we, we continue to produce, as you know, uh, uh, evidence and research on this area, but we actually very focused to create a platform for collaboration together, I hope, as a community uh, to move this forward. Great. So I think at the end, I think we all can all agree that much has been uh, achieved, I think, over the la last two days. And I think, but of course, a lot of things we still need to be done. Um, 
it really, this is in the, in the SFL understanding the new mobility and what we also need to do to make it work. Just to share with you some really concrete things that we have done actually, some of the essential over this week. On Wednesday, we also have the sixth consortium meeting of the Sum for All initiative, with, for which uh, many of those uh, sitting here are uh, part of that. We have uh, continued to build that uh, partnership. We want to continue to enhance or maybe expand that partnership uh, to build that kind of a consensus and, and, and that movement forward. Um, also, this morning, we actually signed a, we facilitated and signed an agreement sort of uh, boosting the transport engineering capacity in Cote d'Ivoire with our partner uh, institute uh, from, uh, from, uh, from Paris. And this is also supported by Sub-Saharan Africa Transport Program. And I think this is a very concrete example of how we mainstream uh, this human capital project in, in the transport sector uh, we just talked about in this particular session. Um, we also, as I mentioned, we also launched a, a groundbreaking uh, report on rail, uh, welfare on, for emerging economy. If you believe in a number, it says that CO2 emission, uh, we could lead to a uh, reduction of 75% if we somehow move the freight, uh, more freight uh, to the rail corridors rather than using the highway system. So those are really sort of concrete uh, things that we are, we are embarking on. Um, really, I think we're really proud of the many of the partnership that the uh, transport practice and along with um, w, WRI and also many of the partners here. I think our host, um, um, Anita, already thanked many of our sponsors and partners. I'm, I may not need to uh, repeat that list, but I think they're, maybe they're showing in the background, um, perhaps. Um, but I also want to um, thank um, all the uh, uh, panelists and the speakers uh, for these two days. I think without you, obviously, uh, this forum would, would have been uh, much less of uh, attractive uh, compared with the number that we have seen. So I think you're making it really a great success. We have tried to practice a little. I just want to make sure we're in the right same place. Uh, we should do this now. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. We didn't have that much time to prepare. Um, I, I, I just want to pick up. You know, to have 1,100 people and 130 speakers, it's an enormous, enormous amount of work that goes on behind the scenes um, to pull this together. I want you to join me to thank the team, uh, the first, the World Bank team, that has been working <laughs> together. <laughs> Wait, wait, isn't there a slide? So this, this uh, well, the previous slide is our uh, uh, sponsor is supporter. These are the... The number of people <laughs> that's been working on it to get to this. I do want to, uh, I don't want to read out all the names, um, but I do want to point out six people, a few people. I hope you can stand up because they have gone out and beyond to put this together and make this enjoyable. I'm going to read out your name. Uh, Wen Yu Jia, can you stand up and so we can all see you? Oh, where you are. Uh, Frank, uh, Frank Hallander, Fra where's Frank? Not here. Yang Chen. In the back there. Shopeng. Mauro, where's our... Here, Mauro. And the famous Marcella Silva, please. Yeah. <laughs> they, they've been continuously working. It's been an absolute pleasure, I must say, going to work together, work with the team over the last few months to put this together. Over to you, Thanks, um, uh, reciprocally. Let me take this opportunity and my honor to recognize uh, a core member of the WRI team. Uh, again, there's a, uh, a whole army of them <laughs> listed here. And as you can ma imagine, I think it takes quite a bit of effort to put this all together. But again, uh, similarly, I also want to recognize uh, uh, the core team, uh, Claudia. <laughs> if I may stand up, please. Thank you. Uh, ben Valley. Ben Valley. Yeah. Yes. Ben, where are you? Uh, Sergio uh, Aweyeda. Alejandro Shohan, Alejandro, uh, Tintin Chan, and Wes Uho. And of course, I also want to thank Anil and uh, Andrew Steer um, and the leadership of the WBI team, uh, WI team for continued partnership with us. And um, I also want to thank uh, 
Melinda, for your flawless <laughs> moderating, keeping everybody on track <laughs> and keeping time. We are almost on time, so thanks very much. Thank you, everyone. This, is, uh, this whole exercise on TT is building a community. I hope without you being here, there won't be any TT. So thank you very much for being here. And have a good evening, good afternoon, and hopefully we'll see all of you next year. Just uh, since I'm kind of a local host, I would just say for those that are seeing Washington, have a great long weekend. You probably need that time to recover. For those that miss work, you probably have to do that over the weekend. <laughs> for those that who, who have to travel, safe travel, safe journey home, and we'll see you all uh, in TT 2020. Thank you. Thank you.